All right, so you got your reading guide. You got, uh, you went over most of it. Some of you are all the way through it. Some of you are still finishing up. Postulate sheet for this chapter. Again, this is the last chapter of the semester. So keep that postulate sheet to use. I think we have one quiz left, one smaller test left, and about two or three homework assignments left Okay, for the rest of the semester. Uh, so looking at this postulate sheet, okay, we have all this vocab, which is what you listed. The first ones you found were acute, obtuse, and right triangles, right? So you should have had acute uh, triangles are triangles where all the angles are acute, which means they are what? Less than, Less than 90 degrees, right, good. And then an obtuse triangle uh, had an angle that is obtuse, uh, which means greater than 90, right? How come there can't be more than one obtuse angle? It wouldn't look right. It wouldn't look right, but would that make, how, why wouldn't there be one? Yeah. Yeah, those three angles have to add to 180, right? So if you had two of them bigger than 90, then you couldn't have a third angle. So it would be a triangle. And then you had a right triangle where it has a right angle. Same thing. You can't have two right angles in a triangle because that's already 180, and you have to have three angles of a triangle up to 180. Okay. So, you know, we looked at these. Uh, we can look at these, say, which is ABC? That would be a Q. Which is ACD? These triangles, that would be obtuse. We, we can classify these angles. We're not going to spend a lot of time going through these. ADE would be right. Okay. The next ones you had were called scalene, isosceles, and equilateral. Scalene, none of the sides are the same length. Isosceles, two of them are the same. And equilateral, all three are the same. Okay. That was scalene, isosceles, and equilateral. Okay. This was the picture then that followed. Those ones, oh, there was also equal angular on your sheet, which what did equal angular mean? All the angles were the same. So in an equal angular triangle, what do all the measures have to be of those angles? Yeah, they have to be 60, because in order for them to all be the same and add up to 180, they all have to be 60. Okay. So this was the picture you have on your reading guide, and it says, first, give me the two isosceles triangles and give me seven scalene. Good question. How do you name the triangles? You want to put the triangle symbol and then the three vertices that make it up. Okay. So, for example, here first, I see that UT and TX are the same, and also UV, which is this one, VX and UX are the same. So I'll put two tick marks on each of those. So two of the uh, isosceles triangles, one of them is this triangle, Right, because it has two of the sides congruent. So again, you name it with the triangle symbol, and then it doesn't matter the order of the vertices. You just it could be UTX, TUX, it could be triangle tux, right? or XUT or whatever. Okay. So you use the triangle symbol and then those three vertices. Okay. Not a very good triangle there. So that's one of them. The other one is actually an equal lateral triangle. Because if it's equilateral, it's also isosceles. Because isosceles has to have at least two congruent sides. That would be this one, okay? Which would be uh, triangle UVX, or if you change the order of them, that's okay. So those are the two isosceles. And actually, UVX is also equilateral. All right, so for the scalene ones, these are all the ones that don't have any sides congruent. Okay? There's seven of them. Okay? We'll list them all out here and then find them in case you just have one or two that you're missing. You can start with uh, VYX, which is that triangle, right? That one is scalene, VYX. Also, the triangle going the other way. VZU. The order doesn't matter. Okay. So there's two of them. We could also say uh, ZTX, that little one. Okay. ZTX, and the other one going the other way, TYU. Right. Okay. So there's four of them. We could also say this one. Out on the side here, VWX, right? 
So there's five of them. And then we have two left. Okay. Which uh, one? VWX, that one right there. And then we would say the other two are. So there's the seven scale lean in that figure. Any questions with those? In there, there, oops, there, there, that one, that one. Okay. All right. And this question here, just asking which ones of these triangles are isosceles. That, uh, oops, let me go back. There would be isosceles, right? Two sides congruent, and there would be isosceles. We know what isosceles means. That one's not on your sheet. Which are scaling? That would be ABD. That one is scaling. None of the sides are the same. And then this is the other one that's on your sheet there. Okay. It says you have an equilateral triangle, which means all the sides are the same. And then I give you the three side length. So it's probably easiest to draw a picture on this one. Now, if you're, for example, if your L was up here and your K was down here, that's okay. Just make sure you label the side correctly. So like KL, you should have as D plus 2. Uh, LM, you should have as 12 minus D. And KM, you should have as 40 minus 13. It doesn't necessarily matter where the vertices are, just that they're labeled correctly. It says they're equilateral, so I know all the sides of this triangle have to be the same. Right? It says it's equilateral. So if all the sides are the same, all of these must be equal to each other. 12 minus D must equal D plus 2 must equal 4D minus 13. So the question asks to solve for D and then find the, find the side measure. So I can just pick two of those sides. Let's say I pick 12 minus D and I pick D plus 2 and set them equal to each other. If you picked another two, that's okay. I just picked these two because I know they're equal to each other. And I can solve this equation for D. So add to both sides. That leaves me with 12 equals, that's 2D plus 2. Move that positive 2 over. Leaves me with 10 equals 2D and divide both sides by 2. I get, you should get D as 5 no matter which one you choose. That's part of the problem. The other problem says find the side of each, find the side length of each of these. So I take that D and no matter which one I plug them into, I should get the same thing everywhere. 12 minus 5 would give me 7. 5 plus 2 would give me 7. 20 minus 13 would give me 7. So the side lengths are 7. The variable is D. Yes. All right, so any questions there? Yep. That's actually the first section in this chapter. That's what we're doing two today. It's just naming these triangles. Okay? Just naming these triangles. You have your postulate sheet now, which tells you all these theorems, so you don't necessarily need to write all of them down. But the first theorem is one we already know. We just now have a theorem number for it. It's called the angle sum theorem. It says... The sum of the measures of the angles of a triangle is 180. We already know that, right? Any triangle, add the three angles up, it's 180. We knew that. We now have a theorem to use in case we need to prove something. If we want to prove why this third angle in a triangle is equal to whatever it is, it's because the angle sum formula says all three angles must add to be 180. Okay, so that's the first one. You already have that. That's the first one on your postulate sheet. Okay, you know what the angle sum is. Three angles add to 180. So for example here, and again, for those of you writing this down, if I'm going too fast or something, please let me know. If I want to find the missing angle measures here, so angle 1, angle 2, angle 3, I want to find those missing ones. There's actually only one of those angles that I can find first. Which angle is the only one I can probably find first? It, it's angle 1, right? Because I have a triangle right here, and I know that three angles of a triangle add to be 180. So this angle plus this angle plus this angle has to equal 180 degrees, right? So 43 plus 74 
is 117, right? So I have whatever's left over to add to equal 180. That would be 63, right? So that angle has to be 63 degrees. That way, all three of them add to be 180. All right? Now I can find angle 2. How do I know what angle 2 is? Vertical. They're vertical. Remember when you have two intersecting lines, the angles on opposite sides, we call those vertical, are equal. If angle 1 is 63, angle 2 has to be 63 degrees. And then I know I have a second triangle over here that those three angles have to add to be 180. Right? I have that one 63, that one 79. So I'll add those together. <laughs> One forty two. So that means how much left over do I have for angle three? Thirty eight degrees. Three angles of a triangle add to one eighty. Vertical angles are equal. Those two things are going to help me find a lot of missing pieces. You can almost bet that there will be a problem on the test where I give you a couple triangles, you find the missing angles. Any questions with that? All right. Very similar one here. Uh, we don't necessarily need to go through because it it's exactly the same. Angle one is going to be equal to these two angles added together minus subtracted from 180. So those two would be uh, 105, right? So angle one would be 75. Angle two would be 75. And then angle three would be whatever's left over when you add those together. Okay, so we're going to kind of jump forward through that one. The next theorem on your postulate sheet, 4.2, is called the third angle theorem. Something that we already know probably also. It says if you have two angles of one triangle that are congruent to two angles of a second triangle, their third angles have to be congruent. So remember we mark congruent triangles with these tick marks. So like if I said angle A and F are congruent, they have one tick mark. And angle C and D are congruent, they have two tick marks. This theorem says... Their third angles also have to be congruent. Angle B and E, I parked those with three tick marks, which makes sense, right? If this angle was uh, 30 and this one was 50, this one was 30, this one was 50, that means both of these have to be 100 because they have to equal 180, right? So the third angle theorem says if you have two of them that are the same in each triangle, the third ones have to be the same. They can't be anything else because in every triangle, they have to, all three angles have to have 280. So that's the second theorem on your postulate sheet called the third angle theorem. And then we have the exterior angle theorem, which is the next one. This one we will use fairly often. Okay? It says the measure of an exterior, which exterior means what? Inside or outside? outside? Outside. The exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum, the addition, of the measures of two remote interior angles. Okay? We don't know what remote interior angles are. Well, first of all, this is the exterior angle. Angle Y, Z, P. Because it's on the exterior of this triangle, right? Everybody agree with that? Angle YZP is the exterior angle. This theorem says this angle is equal to the sum of the measures of the two remote interiors. So what's it mean to be like remote? Like a remote desert island means what? Uncontrolled, Uncontrolled kind of out by itself, alone, right? Not by anything else. Okay, when we talk about remote interior angles... That's the two angles that are on the inside of the triangle that are farthest away from the exterior. They're off by themselves, right? So this theorem says this yellow angle here, the exterior, is equal to whatever these two angles are added together. So what? Okay. So that yep, this, this exterior angle is equal to whatever these two remote interior angles are added together. For example, if I said this angle was 30 and this angle was 50, what is that angle? It's, well, it's equal to 80 because it's equal to those two added together. But let's say you didn't know this theorem. Let's say you had no idea this theorem existed. Could you find this angle? <coughs> yeah, it's 100 degrees, right? Because all three angles of a triangle have to add to 180. And then could you find this angle? Yeah, yeah because why? It's, it's part of a straight line, right? And a straight line has to add up to 180 degrees. So if that's 100, this would be 
80, which is also equal to those two angles added together. So actually, you could have solved problems like this without knowing this theorem. But now that you know it, you can take a shortcut. Instead of finding this angle, the exterior is equal to the two remote interior added together. Okay. All right, so I got two problems I want to look at here. In this figure, I want to find each numbered angle. Angle 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So I'll give you a second to draw it out here uh, if you want to draw it out and follow along with us. So let's start with angle one. A okay. couple different ways I could find angle one. But one, it's the exterior of this triangle, right? It's on the exterior of that triangle. And the theorem says an exterior angle is equal to the two remote interiors, meaning the two interior angles that aren't touching it, added together. So what is angle one? It'd have to be 70, right? Because it's equal to those two added together. So angle one would be 70 degrees. Let's say you didn't want to use that theorem. Let's say you forgot about that theorem. You know in this triangle, three angles have to add to equal 180. Those two are 70, so how many degrees is that one? 110. And then you know... Those two angles lie on a straight line. They have to equal 180. Well, they do. If I didn't know that one, that one would then be 70. Is it 170 or just 70? 70. That's angle 1 is 70 degrees. Okay. So let's move on to angle 2. There are two different ways we can find angle 2. Somebody give me one of them. It's a straight line with 70 degrees. Or it's vertical with 110 Right? Mm -hmm. So that means angle 2 has to be 110 degrees. It's either vert it's a linear pair with this one, or it's vertical with this one. Both would give you 110. All right. Let's move on to angle 3. What's the next thing I need to know to find angle 3? I'd probably like to know this angle, right? Because then I have a triangle right here. So if I could find that angle, I could find the missing one, angle 3. Well, what is that angle right there? It's 70 because it's either vertical with this one or it lies on a straight line with either one of these two. So this angle has to be 70. All right. Well, now I have a triangle here. This one's 70, this one's 64. Okay. Yeah, question? I need to add those two together. That's 134, right? So 180 minus 134. Is that 70? 70, because it's opposite that one. So, angle 3 has to be 46. Because that way these three of that triangle add to equal 180. There's only one way right now that I can find angle 4. What is that? Yeah, it's on a straight line there, but three of those angles make up that straight line, right? So I know all three of these have to add to equal 180. Well, 46 and 32, that's 78, right? So what's left over to make 180? That'd be 102, right? Because if those two are 78, I have 102 degrees left over so that all three of those add to equal 180. <coughs> and then finally, I can move on to angle 5. It's part of that triangle. Those two are 143. So to find angle 5, I take 180 minus 143. That is 37 degrees. Any immediate questions with that right now, how we got those? All right, the last one. I want you, everyone, to try this one. 
But I want you to find all the missing angles, not just angle one. Find one, two, three, four, and five in this figure. So if you need a sheet of scratch paper, you can come borrow one of these. I would like everybody to try this problem together. First, angle one's got to be the first one I can find. Part of a triangle has to have to 180 degrees. These two add up to 130. So that means there's 50 degrees left over for that one. I know that one's 50. What is angle two? 50 because why? It's vertical with that one. Okay. Now, I know one angle of that triangle. I'm trying to find that one. So if I could find that angle... I could find the third one there. Right. It lies on a straight line with this one. So those two have to have to be 180. That one's 135, so that means there's 45 left over for that one. So that's 95 together, which means there's 85 left over for that one for them to be 180. Right, because those are 95, so I have 85 left over. Yes, question? Yep. Because of all, no matter, okay. In every pair of intersecting lines, the vertical angles or the angles opposite are always the same. So like those two would be the same, and like those two would be the same, always. No matter where you have two lines that intersect, the opposite ones are always equal, okay? And then finally, angle four, two ways you can find it. What's one of them? Uh, straight line or vertical. Vertical with that one, or straight line, linear pair with that one. 45 degrees. Finally, three angles of a triangle. Those add up to one, one twenty. Okay, All right. I heard some different answers. Now, actually, two ways I can find angle five here. One of them without doing much work at all. It's the exterior to these two remote interior. So I could just add those up. That's one twenty, right? So angle five would be 120. The other way I could have found it is since those are 120, what's left over in that triangle is 60, and then it lies on a straight line with angle five has to have to 180, so that's 120. Okay. So that's that figure solved for all the missing angles. So the, oops, let me go back here. The last two things are these two corollaries, which we already probably Recognize these. These are on our postulate sheet. It says the acute angles of a right triangle are complementary, which makes sense, right? Because if I have two angles of a right triangle, there's 90 degrees here, so there's only 90 degrees left over that these two can be. So no matter what those two angles are, you should be able to add them up and be 90. Okay? Last one, there's at most one obtuse or one right triangle in every triangle. Right? You can't have more than one. We talked about that earlier. 